Hello and welcome to this week's edition of High School Roundup on CUTV. I'm your host, Anthony D'Agostino, and alongside me is the dyna dynamic duo of nuclear physicists, Dylan Goodet and Stephen Ruffing. Guys, it's great to have you on set. Danny Beck is not able to be with us today. Uh, he's covering something else for CUTV. So we have our correspondent, Dylan Goday as a co-host today. Dylan, welcome to the, uh, this realm of the set. Oh, I'm so excited. I've been uh, waiting for a chance to be on High School Roundup for some time now, and now I'm starting to find a love for Whippeal football, so I'm excited. That's right. Whippeal football? Better than West Virginia football. I wouldn't go that far, but <laughs> it's close. That far. You hear that? <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get right into it. And Dylan, we're going to start right off with you, throw you through the gauntlet as you have Danny Beck's highlights from this uh, game we just did last week with CUTV. Yes, I do. And it was like a barn burner there. Uh, Newcastle traveled to Ringgold. And then CUTV highlights, let's jump right into it. As again, uh, Ringgold now coming out with those blue uniforms, uh, the American flag as well. Again, like I mentioned, this was a barn burner, old school kind of football game as the Newcastle team traveled to Ringgold and this started out with a Marcus Hooker pass to Devin Sims in the end zone. That was the only scoring though of the whole first half as we jump into the third now as Marcus Hooker hands the ball off to Josh Thompson and they take a 14 to excuse me 13 to nothing lead there with that one and on into the third quarter now Ringgold trying to answer as they pass the Caleb Essel pass goes to CJ Franks for a 39 yard touchdown pass and Ringgold looking like they might Try to claw back into this one. But Marcus Hooker, the Division I football commit, runs on a 10-yard run to extend their lead to 20-7. to And as this one is rounding out, Ringgold's running back, Brandon Brendan Small, runs in on a two-yard run there with 48 seconds left to go as Ringgold there tried to get back into it, but was unable to do so as Newcastle comes away with the win 20-14, to extending their record to 5-2. And guys, that was, a, that was a great game right there. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, Colin and I were on the call that game. And like you said, it was old school football. That's the, the high school football that uh, we we're used to seeing. Just a low scoring game, gritty, uh, hard hitting, um, a lot of running. Uh, Ringgold, their running back, Brendan Small, you saw that touchdown from him uh, at the last touchdown for Ringgold end of the game. Uh, he was very underrated, very uh, overlooked. I mean, he was a gritty running back. He would put his head down and just plow through that line. And that's what you'd love to see from a running back. Yeah, definitely. And you guys mentioned it. Most of CUTV's games this week have been, this season, have been high scoring game. And a, tw a 20 to 14 game, that really is old school. And you'd think weather had something to do with it. No, just two great defenses. Yep. I, I noticed there were a lot of three and outs, a lot of four and outs there in that ball game. Just defenses took control there in that game. Absolutely. And Marcus Hooker, a key thing to talk about there with him, uh, D1 commit, like you said, Dylan. So keep an eye out for him as this Newcastle team moves forward, uh, looking to be in the playoffs. As we look now to the Big Nine scoreboard here, Bell Vernon taking on West Mifflin, 35 to seven. Uh, Bell Vernon wins Trinity over Greensburg Salem, 42 to 14. And Steve, mention talk about this Trinity team and that huge game they had against Greensburg Salem. Yeah, I mean we saw Trinity when they played. Uh, Bell Vernon, uh, they only needed eight yards against the Golden Lions. Joey Caroli, he became the first running back in Trinity's football program history to rush more than 4,000 career yards. A big ups to Joey Caroli. I mean, we saw him in the past. He is a great running back. He finished with 160 rushing yards. He scored a touchdown uh, to aid Trinity that victory over Greensburg Salem. Yeah, and Joey Caroli is just a phenomenal athlete. So congratulations to him on breaking that school record. Uh, for Trinity. As we continue on the Big Nine Conference, Uniontown at Albert Gallatin. Albert Gallatin comes away with the victory 40 to 13. As we look now at the Big Nine non-conference, excuse me, my apologies, we had the Big Nine non-conference game. That was Newcastle Ringgold. But you see Bell Vernon again clinched their conference with an 8-0, an 8-0 uh, record there. Thomas Jefferson has clinched the playoffs 6-1, 7-1. West Mifflin has clinched the playoffs as well with a record of four and three and five and three. Trinity and Ringgold are looking to make the playoffs. Uh, Trinity's four and three, five and three, Ringgold three and four, three and five. There is one playoff spot left. If Trinity wins, they will get into the playoffs. If Ringgold wins, they will get into the playoffs and they play each other this week. So this is a big game for them as you see Greensburg, Salem, Laurel Highlands, Albert Gallatin, and Uniontown are all out of the playoffs. Big East Conference scoreboards now. 
Connellsville taking on Armstrong. Armstrong wins 57 to 22. Penn Trafford over Kiske 54 to 19. As you continue on the Big East Conference, McKeesport at Gateway. Gateway winning 21 to 18. And then Latrobe over Plum 21 to 7. Franklin Regional at North Hills in the non-conference 5A side of things. Franklin Regional defeats North Hills 21 to 13. Looking at the Big East standings now, Penn Trafford has clinched their conference 7-0 and 9-0. The playoffs are already set for this conference as well with Gateway, McKeesport, and Franklin Regional all in the playoffs. Now, guys, who do you think is going to hold that second place spot or Gateway right now is holding it? Who is going to come back and possibly take it away from them or will they hold it? Honestly, I think that those standings that we saw are just going to stay the exact same. Uh, that conference is good. It's very competitive. But, I mean, it's pretty set in stone. Penn Trafford 1, Gateway 2, McKeesport, Franklin Regional. I mean, it's just I think that's just clockwork, and that's how that conference works. Yeah, and I think that uh, Gateway-McKeesport game was a high school game of the week pick em this this past week for high school roundup, and it turned out to be a great game. And I think that really was the battle for the second-place team, whichever team came out on top, and that would have the advantage they're heading on to these last couple weeks. Yeah, definitely. As before... We go into break. Dylan Godet, now on set with us, will have the West Virginia Roundup. Yeah, and it's single A this week as, again, a little bit different view here for me, but uh, it is single A, so let's jump into the scoreboards right now. And it's going to be week nine here as South Mary's took on, St. Mary's, excuse me, took on South Harrison, and South Harrison came over with the huge win, and that one's a single A game of the week. South Harrison was able to snap the 2016 state champ St. Mary's 20 game winning streak there, 43 to 15. South Harrison's running back ran for 208 yards and four touchdowns in the win. And on into Midland Trail, they traveled to Nicholas County there, a double A opponent, and they fell 29 to 34. Let's see how Midland Trail affects their rankings this week. As now we head into Steubenville Catholic out of Ohio, traveling to Madonna, their number five Madonna. Madonna was Suffered a loss 43-7. to Look for Madonna to try to bounce back this week as they will try to clinch a home berth for the first round of the playoffs. And Calhoun County traveled to Webster County, two schools in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia as Webster County came away with a 53-18 to win. On into Tug Valley versus Hurley, uh, Virginia there. Bit of a long travel there for Tug Valley, but they came away with a 43-8 to win. And Tug Valley has been off to a great start this season. Jonathan Blankenship carried the ball 18 times for 284 yards and four touchdowns, their fifth straight win there. And again, as Bills, Bellsville, excuse me, Ohio, a couple of Ohio teams here, as well as one Virginia team, uh, traveled to Cameron there, and Cameron with a big 58 to 25 win. And Cameron will travel to another Ohio team this week against Bridgeport, Ohio. Now on into the standings here. The rankings as South Harrison, Huge winners this week. Again, knocking off St. Mary's and giving St. Mary's their first loss in 20 games. And South Harrison actually travels to East Hardy this week. So that'll be a huge game there. The battle of the two undefeated teams. Really, the winner clinches the number one seed. And uh, that's all for the high school football single-A rankings. After the break, we'll have more South Union Township, the South Union Township game of the week, as well as 1A, 2A, and 3A scores. Stay tuned. One for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. Welcome back to the CUTV's High School Roundup. As we look now at the South Union Township Game of the Week highlights where Laurel Highlands took on Thomas Jefferson. And Steve, you have the highlights from this game. I do, and uh, it was a tough one. It was a tough one for my uh, Laurel Highland Mustangs. They took on Thomas Jefferson, and boy, Thomas Jefferson, 
They were angry. Let's go in the highlights. And they took it out on poor Laurel Highlands. There they are, shaking hands. Laurel Highlands, they just did not know what was coming at them. Garrett Fairman, he starts off early with a 20-yard just dime right to Shane Stump into the end zone. That's their first touchdown. A dilly dime, maybe? And then Justin Vigna, he gets his name on the score sheet with a 10-yard run. He finds that way on the outside, just barely gets into the end zone before being ripped down. Vigna in the second quarter. He's back at it again. He just cuts through that defense, finds his hole. He has a lot of open space. He just torches that defense for a 40-yard run. Into, I'm sorry, that was the first quarter. Into the second quarter now. Vigna, another touchdown. Goes right in for a six-yard run. Finds those holes once again. Fairman. This next touchdown, he's going to drop back in that pocket. He's going to launch it to that near corner for a seven-yard pass to stump again. And then to just put that nail into the coffin, Vigna, just no mercy. He starts from that 50-yard line, goes to the end zone, finds his way through that defense yet again. A 50-yard run to end that game. There was only... Uh, 42 points in that first half. All I have to say is Laura Highlands, they uh, shut them down in the second half, so no big deal. Uh, but Vigna, man, that guy's good. He had one, four touchdowns in that game. Yeah, he looked tough there yeah. just in those highlights. That looks like a, a heck of a runner there. And TJ, they're going to look to bounce back. This is really see how good TJ is as he comes into playoff time. Can they bounce back against Bel Vernon? Can they come back and beat them? That'd be something to see because we haven't really seen TJ in this spot for a couple years. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're in that second place spot. I mean, that's huge for them. Uh, they're angry, but uh, that Bell Vernon team, they took them down and they proved that they can compete in that conference. Yeah, definitely. That's just going to make it really intriguing here come playoff time, and that's going to be another. I expect to see them again sometime this season. Well, moving on now into the Tri County South Conference here. As we look at the scoreboards from Last week, Avella taking on Manesson. Manesson losing 18 to 16. California over Jeff Morgan, 57 to eight. As we continue on here, we have Carmichael at Fort Cherry. Carmichael's getting the victory, 31 to 14. Moving on into the Tri-County South, the single A non-conference. Mapletown falls to Jeanette, 47 to nothing. Jeanette, the number one team in their conference. Uh, and they win in a shutout fashion. As we look at the Tri-County South standings here, California, congratulations, you have clinched your conference 6-0 and 9-0. Carmichael's wins and, and gets into the playoffs 6-1, 6-2. West Green has clinched the playoffs, big for them. They're 4-2 and 7-2. And and Fort Cherry has also clinched the playoffs with a 4-2 and two record and 6-2 record. Jeff Morgan and Manesson are still battling for that playoff spot. Manesson needs to win this week. Guys, who uh, out of this conference do you think may have a chance to get into the playoffs? I don't know. That's tough. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Jeff Morgan because I just don't think Manesson has it. But, I mean, if that's not high school football for you, uh, getting into the playoffs with uh, like a 3-4 record or a 2-5 or a and five record, I mean, that's, that's just high school football. Uh, but I'm going to have to go with Jeff Morgan getting that uh, final spot. I have to agree with you as well. We saw Manesson earlier this season. They just don't have the numbers, I think, to compete with these teams. But, again, you are mentioning it, 2-4 and four in your conference and making the playoffs. That's just yeah. something about PA football that's pretty interesting. Moving on to the Century Conference now. Bentworth taking on Frazier. Frazier winning 39 to 18. Charleroi squeaking out a victory over Beth Center, 49 to 44. Dylan, a big win for Charleroi, but it came in a close call. Yeah, definitely. There's a shootout there at Beth Center, 49 to 44. Gino Pellegrini passed for 314 yards and three touchdowns. Guys, that's a guy we've seen this season. He is fantastic. And Pellegrini also scored on a 49 yard touchdown run as well. And they will be, I believe, as we're going to see a little teaser for later, they may have clinched a big spot there, as well as Hunter Perry clinched off the victory with a 54-yard run at the end of that ball game. But Gino Pellegrini is something special. That he is. And Gino Pellegrini with that huge touchdown run, a big time thing for them. Um, Steve, I know what you're going to say. We're going to get to that a little bit later when we get to the standings, because uh, something interesting to note about this Charlotte Ray team in a little bit, just in a little bit, as we continue on the Century Conference, Washington at Burgettstown. Washington wins 33 to nothing over Burgettstown. In the non-conference 2A, 
Uh, 1A Leechburg taking on 2A Brownsville. Gary clapping in the studio in the uh, control room there. Brownsville wins 35 to 19. Uh, Leechburg has not gotten a win in their conference this season. Chartier Houston 2A loses to 3A McGuffey 68 to 6. As we now look at the Century Conference standings here, Washington wins their conference 6 0, 8 0. But Steve, read off that little yeah. bit there. Charleroi, this Charleroi team, it's been 13 years since they, since they have made the playoffs, and this is a big thanks to Gino Pellegrini and his offense because the, he, the kid's good, and uh, 13 years is a pretty long time not making those playoffs. And I believe they clinched the number two spot as well, so I, if I'm not mistaken, that's a home playoff game as well. So first time in 13 years making it to the playoffs and you're hosting, that's, that's pretty fantastic as well. And again, the first time I saw Gino Pellegrini, I was doing stats for that game. I looked over to Danny in the middle of the broadcast, and I said, he is something special, and he's breaking all kinds of Charlotte Boy records, and they still have him for another, for another year after this season. Also clinching the playoffs, Burgettstown, Best Center, and Frazier. Bentworth not clinched it yet, but they're not out of it yet. Brownsville didn't clinch it last week, and they, lost, they won this week and still are out of the playoffs with a record of one and five and two that's and seven. That's not Brownsville. If that's not a representative of Brownsville, I don't know what else is. <laughs> As we continue on into the Interstate Conference now, the scoreboard's Dairy shutting out Waynesburg 47 to nothing. South Park over Elizabeth Ford, 18 to 14. Guys, I didn't see anything about this game, but Elizabeth Ford, number one in their conference, falling to South Park, kind of a shock to me. Look, I, I told you about the South Park team. They are up and down constantly, and we've seen them at their highest this season, and we have seen them at their lowest, and now they're back at the highest. It, it, they're such an unpredictable team. Uh, they, <laughs> I don't know, it's just, it's almost like uh, your McKee sport. Uh, yeah. You know, you never know what football team you're going to get out of them. Yeah, and Elizabeth Ford, that's a high-powered offense. Again, that's a team we've seen this season as well. And hold them to 14 points late, th late in the season. That could be big for Elizabeth Ford, too. That could be a morale kicker there, to suffering a loss like that. Moving on to the Interstate Conference, Yacht beating South Moreland 49-38. to The non-conference 3A, we have Mount Pleasant at... Beaver, and Beaver getting the win over Mount Pleasant, 42 to 13, Dylan. Yeah, Brody List completed three of five passes, so not a lot of passes thrown for 150 yards, though, and two touchdowns, so how about that uh, quarterback play there as they uh, able to get the win against the Vikings there in a non-conference game. Tyler Wallace scored three touchdowns for Beaver, but it, and that was enough to propel them into victory. He caught an 87-yard pass from List and also ran for two touchdowns. Gino Mavero led all rushers with 101 yards and a touchdown for the Bobcats. Again, that's a big win there over Mount Pleasant. Uh, that was a closer, it was, we expected a closer game there, but Beaver was able to come out with a big victory. And Mount Pleasant not doing so well this season, as you see right there. They are out of the playoffs with a record of two and four and three and six. Elizabeth Ford has clinched the conference, even with that loss to South Park. They are six and one and six and two. South Park has clinched the playoffs with a five and one, five and three record. Derry and McGuffey are vying for that, those playoff spots. Derry five and one and eight and one. McGuffey four and two, six and three. I don't know how many playoff spots are left exactly, but if there's only one spot left, who do you think is going to come up with that playoff spot, McGuffey or Derry, Steve? You know, that's a tough one. Uh, just looking at that, it's very close. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Derry. I think it's going to stay right where they're at because um, – I don't know. Uh, we'll see. McGuffey has a, a winnable game. I think they both have a winnable game. Uh, or do they play each other? Is that? Right? Yeah. I believe that, that may be the case. I think that's, I think that's game. a high school round. Yeah. Yeah. Pick them. I mean, it's so, a winnable game for both yeah. of them. I, it, no doubt about that. Uh, so it's going to be tough. I think maybe Derry comes away with that win. Yeah, I'm going to go contrarian there. I'm going to say McGuffey okay. possibly come out with victory there uh, because that's just going to be such a close game. And I think McGuffey, after the season they've had, I think they'd come away with the victory there. Well, before we go to break, as always, the hometown scoreboards with our correspondent, Colin Kirkwood. Colin, take it away. Thank you, Anthony, and welcome back. I've got another serving of hometown football for you, so put on your goggles and your floaties because we're going to dive right into the scoreboards. And here is the first one. Steel Valley traveled to Sarah Catholic and came away with another win, unsurprisingly, 39-14. Lampeter Strasburg hosted Cacalico and fell again two weeks in a row, 52 to 21. Moving on, Central Dolphin hit the road for Chambersburg this past weekend and came back with a win, 
48 to seven. And the winless season continues for the Millersburg Indians, falling 34 nothing to Pine Grove. Moving on into West Virginia down the road here, Dylan Gooday's Buckhannon Upshore Buccaneers traveled to Brook in a game which he broadcasted. They fell 28 to seven. Next up, you'll take a look at our standings board here. Steve, once again, no surprise, continues to be alone up top. We had a little bit of a shift this week. Danny has jumped Anthony and moved up to the second spot. Down farther, we've got Dylan holding in the middle of the pack at three and five. Gary Smith is still in contention to move out of club bottom at two and seven. Dylan can still slip into club bottom, and I have officially clinched the club bottom title for 2017 with an 0 and 9 record. Looking forward to next week, we've got plenty of nice games here on the schedule. Millersburg will travel to Sesquanita. Central Dolphin heads to Redland. Brentwood makes the trip to Steel Valley. Lampeter Strasburg hits the road for Garden Spot. And Preston comes to battle the Buccaneers in Buchanan, West Virginia. But make sure that you don't change your channel yet because we're not done yet. We've got upcoming schedules. We've got the pick em with the Jody High Roll of the Week, and we've got our top three plays. So don't touch that dial. Stay tuned here on CUTV. CUTV News Center is California University of Pennsylvania's award winning student television newscast. Your source for live, local, late breaking news. Forecasts from the Cal U Weather Center, the region's latest entertainment news. Balkan sports highlights and regional scoreboards with television news coverage you can't get anywhere else. Watch it live Thursdays on CUTV and on demand. CUTV News Center, online all the time. Welcome back to CUTV. It's high school roundup here as we look at the upcoming schedules for the Tri-County South. This Friday, October 27th, Fort Cherry travels to Jeff Morgan, Mapletown is at Manesson, and West Green is at California. In the Century Conference, Charleroi at Brownsville, Frazier at Chartiers Houston, CUTV's Game of the Week is Washington at Beth Center. In the Interstate Conference, Friday, October 27th, McGuffey at Derry. Guys, we talked about that in the standings. Big game for them. South Park at Yacht, and then South Moreland at Mount Pleasant. In the Big Nine Conference, Ringgold at Trinity, Albert Gallon at Laurel Highlands, Uniontown at Greensburg, Salem, West Mifflin at Thomas Jefferson, and timeout. We have to have a pick em here on this one. It's not in our actual pick em, it's gonna be kind of a Low key pick them here. West Mifflin at Thomas Jefferson. Dylan, who do you have? I think Thomas Jefferson, big 20, 30, maybe even 40 point victory there for Thomas Jefferson. They're mad. Uh, I've been in that situation before. Uh, they they want to rebound after that suffering that loss. They're a dominant team. They want they don't want anything to do with West Mifflin. They don't want anything to do with the rest of their conference right now. So I don't think they're going to come away with a big win, big win. I mean, when these two teams face each other, this is arguably one of the biggest rivalries in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, you could throw out the record books because anything could happen. This is going to be a very close game. Uh, Thomas Jefferson is not going to run away with this one. Uh, I think it's going to be maybe a two-score touchdown. Thomas Jefferson gets a win. I'm going Thomas Jefferson as well, but I, I just think West Mifflin's down this year. Thomas Jefferson, I think they, they have what it takes to do it. Uh, and we're going to do this also. Colin Kirkwood, what's your pick for this one? I'll take Thomas Jefferson. Can't go wrong picking TJ. All right. So we all think Thomas Jefferson is going to beat West Mifflin and find out next week if that happens. Big East Conference now moving on. Friday, October 27th, Armstrong at Kiskey, Connellsville at Latrobe, Gateway at Franklin Regional, and Penn Trafford is at McKeesport. In the non-conference on Friday, October 27th, Bell Vernon goes to Ambridge, a city school in Pittsburgh. Burgettstown is at Elizabeth Forward. Fox Chapel is at Plum. Summit Academy at Avella, Waynesburg at Southside Beaver. And on the non-conference side for Saturday, October 28th, we have two games. Bentworth is at Riverview, and then Carmichael's takes on Bishop Canavan. Looking now at the pick -em, everyone's favorite part of the show, 
Danny and the Twitter people are tied at first place with 25 and 10. Me, Dylan, and Gary are all tied for second, 23 and 12. Colin is in the bottom with 21 and 14. His puppy right underneath him, 19 and 16. Jody Highroller flipping the puppies this record and going 16 and 19. However, nobody was under 500 today, so congratulations, Steve, on being three and two. Thank you, I try my best. As we continue on into our picks this week, Mapletown at Manesson. This is split 50-50, guys. I'm going with Manesson, Dan is going with Manesson. Steve, why are you going Mapletown? Um, Manesson is really down this year. Uh, Mapletown, we always saw them, they didn't have the strongest uh, team, but I just think Manesson is really, really down this year. On paper, their record are the, is the exact same. Yeah, I, I, we saw Manesson and they don't have enough numbers, I don't think, to compete with this Mapletown team. Mapletown has a good running back. We've seen him go off a couple games this season. Going on to the next pick I'm here, Bentworth at Riverview. Steve, Danny, and the puppy are going with Bentworth. Everyone else going with Riverview. Steve, is this your high roll of the week? High roll of the week. You, you bet it is. I've got to get somewhere warm because of all these hot takes. Uh, so I'm going to stay over there on that Bentworth side. With Danny. With Danny. And notice something. Danny uh, went opposite of Gary and I, and we're two down, so that could tighten up the standings think, even more. Uh, and Danny we went off doing, two games in a row. I think Danny was doing a little strategy okay. on that one. As we continue saying. on into the pick up here, McGuffey at Derry. I'm going with McGuffey. Steve, you're going with Derry. And do you do that because you want to make up some ground, or do you really think Derry's going to beat McGuffey? I think Derry could beat McGuffey. I Honestly, I'm actually really surprised that so many people went with, with McGuffey. I this, thought this one was going to be more down the middle as well, but uh, I guess I'm the only one that wants to be right. So Gary wants to be right as well. Well, so. duh. Yeah, me and Gary, you know, great minds think alike. Moving on to the next pick em, Ringgold at Trinity, a playoff game here, basically. Whoever wins makes it into the playoffs. I'm going with Trinity. Uh, Steve, you have two picks there. That's, that's illegal. <laughs> Whoa, throw the flag on the play. Uh, I, I, I meant to go Ringgold. I was over on Trinity from last time, but uh, I'm, I'm meant to go Ringgold. Uh, I forgot to delete that X. There it goes, Ringgold, because uh, this is going to be a running battle. It is, and like you said, Trinity, great team. Uh, but I agree with you. It could be close. I think Ringo could pull it out. But again, that's three games now that... Danny and I and Gary have had opposite of each other, so look, Danny's is, not, Danny's, the standings are going to be look, interesting. Look, Mr. Amateur, Danny's not an amateur at this. He knows what he's doing. I'm you're, just you're, saying, you're acting very surprised if that these, he's doing. They're all opposite, so this could be a big shape up, shake up in our standings. That's what he's doing it for, Dylan. He's trying to make it interesting. Okay, I, I understand. As just we give continue me the on into the next pick, I'm here, Fox Chapel at Plum. I'm going with Fox Chapel. <laughs> Dylan going with Plum. He wants to shake things up. Uh, he thinks Plum's going to be able to win that one. Uh, best of luck to you, Dylan, and congratulations on the loss for that one. Well, I'm just trying uh, to shake it up, Steve. Well, and apparently I didn't want to participate in this one. Uh, I didn't have an axe. I'm going with Fox Chapel as well. I think they're just a bigger, tougher school in this one. As that will conclude our pick on for this week, stay tuned next week to see where we are. Washington at Best Center is CU TV's game of the week. We are not going to go into the top three plays on the show. We'll do that at the end uh, while we roll the credits. As we're, we have time, actually. Our director, Gary Smith, let us know we have time. So we're going to roll right in to the top three plays here on CU TV. Dylan, we're going to start with you on number three. I believe it'll be Laurel Highlands first and Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, they game that was full of highlights, especially there for Thomas Jefferson as Garrett Fram actually takes a, throws a pass there to uh, Stump for a nice touchdown. Absolutely. We're going to stick with Laurel Highlands. That's that 50-yard run I was talking about by Justin Vigna just finding his way through that Laurel Highlands defense, uh, making his way in the end zone. 50 yards on that run. How about the speed on that one as well? Newcastle Ringgold time here, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper. Malik Hooker's run, look at that, just moving his feet, jumping his way into the end zone. He had tacklers all over him there. A great run there by uh, Hooker on that play. And the Blue Ribbon play, it'll stay with McGuffey here. Just look at this run up the middle, breaking tackles all over the place. And just a fantastic run to see there from this McGuffey team. They didn't win the game, but they're winning the Blue Ribbon play, uh, the most consecutive Blue Ribbon plays of the week. And that's why I picked McGuffey to win that game. Just that play right there, 
fantastic. Well, that'll conclude the show here on CUTV. Thank you all for watching High School Roundup today. And every time you tune in to watch here on CUTV, thanks to our co-hosts here, Dylan Godet, filling in for Danny Beck, Stephen Ruffing, as always, and our correspondent for the hometown scoreboard, Colin Kirkwood. Thanks to our director, Gary Smith, and the crew in the studio, in the control room, making everything look good. Thank you all for watching High School Roundup on CUTV. We'll be back next week with the playoff brackets, hopefully, here on High School Roundup on CUTV. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.